Hello guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Gaurav and you're watching me on Log on to Gaurav. Hope you guys are doing great. I'm once again back with a very useful video as the title of the video says, this is going to be your ultimate guide of flying drone in India. In this video, I'll tell you all about drones. So if you want to enter into flying drones as a hobbyist or as a professional, this video is going to help you a lot. So please watch the video till the end. In this video, I'll tell you how you can fly a drone, where to buy, what are the regulations in India and so many other things. So let's get started. I have been flying drones since a long time. Since the time when drone was not so popular, their availability was scarce and you have to literally buy them in a black marketish way when no one will tell you from where they bought the drone or with whose permission they are flying. But presently, the drone laws have been very much streamlined and proper rules are there. Proper maps are there and most of all, proper guidelines are there. So let's get started. First one is what to buy. Well, India is becoming a drone hub and government is supporting many drone startups in India. You can have many options. But as far as cinematic drones are concerned, they are safe to fly, have good camera, comes with a lot of software features and almost ready out of the box are the ones made by DJI. This video is not at all sponsored by DJI. I wish it was. So I won't talk on this topic anymore. Do as much research as you want. You are going to end up with DJI drones. Unless you want an FPV. For FPV, there are brands other than DJI. You can get them in India as well, or you can even attempt to make a drone of your own. But if you want a drone that captures cinematic videos, DJI is almost the only brand for you. Now in DJI, which drone model to select? If that is your quest, then buy the latest one. They are no doubt the best version of DJI drones available. If size of the drone matters, then you can consider the mini series and buy the latest mini drone they have. They are very light and very convenient to carry. I have used DJI Mini 3 and I was impressed by the form factor of the drone. Also mini drones are under 250 grams and comes into nano category which means less jamela. If your budget allows, try to get the combo kit also known as fly more kit which has most importantly two extra batteries and then things like charging hub, bag, car charger etc. Now once you have decided what to buy, next question is where to buy. Ever since government has come up with drone rules and accepts that drone are the thing that people are going to have, buying drones has become a lot easier. Earlier, like 2016-17, drones were available kinda black market. No one knew how to be legal in the drone world and even the government was confused. But now, drones are available on e-commerce website and offline stores. You can buy on famous platforms like Amazon and Flipkart among other online sellers and there are a lot of physical stores like some of them I know in Delhi, Mumbai etc. In offline mode, you can get a drone without paying GST and that can cost 15-18% to 18 cheaper. But then there will not be any bill, so you'll have to be mindful of that. As far as bringing the drone from your recent US visit is concerned, legally you cannot import a drone. As per Director General of Foreign Trade, importing drone is banned in India. One can import drones for defense and other government driven purposes. But of course, you are not one of them. But still, imported drones are available in market. DJI is obviously an imported drone, but Aam khao aur gutliya mat gino ki parampara nibhate hoye. Don't worry about ki how they got the DJI drone in India. You just go to a store or e-commerce website and then buy. That's okay. It'll cost a bit more, but it is okay. Next question is where to fly? This has a very complicated answer. But as per government, we obviously cannot fly near airports. We cannot fly near international borders. There are various zones like green, yellow and red, with certain zones have limitation on the altitude of the flight. And based on these things, DGCA has come up with an interactive map on its drone dedicated website, Digital Sky, wherein all the zones are marked. I have put the link to the website in the description, so you can refer to the map and plan your flight accordingly. Even DJI drones have this feature, where airports are marked in the map and it gives you the warning before flight about the altitude restriction in that area. Now there are many drone prohibited areas like oil and gas installation, defense area etc where drones are not allowed. But unfortunately those places are not yet incorporated in the interactive map on the digital sky platform. Then of course flying drones over private property should be restricted but again there is no control over it. Someone can come and hover on your property but you can't do anything about it. So be cautious and mindful about where you can fly the drone. Don't take the risk of flying in a crowded area as any mistake could be catastrophic. So I'll say enjoy responsibly. I have a video, you can check it out here. In that video, I have shared my drone crashes during various trips across India and what can go wrong. No harm was done as there was no one around. So you also do that. By the way, if you are unaware about me, I'll request you to check out my channel. I make videos on trips I have taken so far. I make informative videos to help you plan your trip and make the most out of it. 
So you can also consider subscribing to channel. It would really be motivating. So do you need to take permission from local authorities before flying? Answer is no. As per drone rules, if you're flying in green zone, you don't require any permission. So now let's move on to the next question. Who can fly? It depends on the type of drone. If you're flying a nano drone that weighs less than 250 grams, like DJI Mini or Micro drones, which weighs between 250 grams to 2 kg, basically remaining DJI drones and FPV, you do not require a remote pilot license. For micro drones, you should be flying for a non-commercial purpose. So if you are a hobbyist flying for your own fun, you need nothing. Next thing is registration. As per drone rules, every drone must have a unique identification number, that is UIN, just like the number plate of the vehicle. To get a UIN for your drone, you need to create an account on Digital Sky platform, upload the drone photos, mention the serial number of drone and remote and various other things. You have to pay a fee of Rs 100. Upon verification of all the documents by DGCA, a UIN is given. You should write the UIN on the drone or at least know the UIN. At airports, the UIN is asked by airlines if you are carrying a drone in check-in luggage. Drones are not allowed in hand baggage, but batteries are to kept in hand baggage. Regulations There are few other things to keep in mind, like insurance. Just like any other vehicle, you should have insurance for third-party damages. But for drones in nano category, insurance is exempted. There are few other regulations like pilot training institute, approval of type certificate, etc. etc. But as I have mentioned earlier, if you are not making a drone of your own, and even if you are making a drone but it is less than 250 grams, then you don't have to worry about other aspects of the drone laws. As far as documentation is concerned, UIN is the most important thing that you should have. Second, if you are flying drones heavier than 250 grams for commercial purposes, then you should have a remote pilot license. If you are making a drone of your own, it should be certified by agencies appointed by DGCA. That means it should be fit to fly in the air. So to summarize, you buy a DJI drone, go to a Digital Sky website, register your drone and get a UIN. Go to a nice place, check the interactive map of the Digital Sky. If it is in the green zone, then just fly your drone. No worries. These things apply to probably 95% of the viewers. If you have any further query, please feel to ask me in the comments. I reply to every comment. So if you have found the video useful, please get it a thumbs up, share with a friend who might find it useful too, and subscribe to my channel. It is really very important for me. So that was all guys from this video. See you in the next video. Till then, take care and fly safe.